Hey, this is a little different. I keep screwing this up. Uh, this is PVC from uh, Home Depot. I think it's half inch thick. And I keep trying to make this sign for this client and it keeps screwing up no matter what I do. I can't, like this stuff doesn't come clean. It's eating the little points of the stars. It's, uh, so I decided I can't do a large uh, pocket like this. I'm gonna have to reverse this so that the sign is, because yeah, here's another one. That's another version. Another one that got uh, got screwed up too. I didn't uh, I can show you details, but just trust me, it's not, not right. So I was able to talk to the client and I got them to reverse it where it'll be all green and this will just be V carved out white. And I'm hoping, and then it'll just be a, a, a white border. I'm hoping they'll be happy with that. And I'm, well, they will be happy with that. I showed them the image, they like it, but I'm hoping I can do it without screwing it up. So let's see. I've been researching uh, speeds and feeds. I can't find anything, you know, concrete. Nobody has a solid answer. Everybody says, oh, just go faster than you're, than you're used to. Okay, I want exact numbers. Like what, what do you mean faster than I'm used to? Okay, that's great. But you know, I don't know what a faster than I'm used to is not that fast i don't know but we'll see uh okay let me stop this uh, well no not yet hold on so i i this is green because i spray painted this part to try to do what i'm gonna do next and that's why there's some overspray on this which i didn't care about because this is garbage anyway so then uh i'm putting my double-sided tape which is this stuff and i have a few rolls of it over there but um, yeah, I'll put, a, I'll put a link to this in the description because this is great stuff. It's like super, super thin, which I like. It's not like the fat foam stuff that gives and you know bounces a little bit. It's very nice stuff and it grips and it doesn't leave you know much residue. I think there's some here you can see from the last taping, but it's really not much. But uh, okay, so let me, I'm gonna peel this off now. Hold on. Ugh. You can see the old tape there. That's the old tape. Look at that. Look, it sticks so well. It actually pulled the it pulled the bench dog out of the bench hole there. So look at that. Look, that's it's been laid on dust and everything, and it's still look at that. Super good. Nice sticky stuff. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna peel this tape off and lay it down. Hold on. Let me put you on a stand or something. Hold on. All right. Well, if this thing is working, but. Hopefully you can hear me well, because I have this, these things plugged in now, these little microphones. I'll give a link to this. They're really cool. They come with, uh, comes with two mics. You can see there's one still in there and these three clips. I got one clip and one of the mics on me right now. It's on my t-shirt. It's a lapel mic, but I hardly ever wear lapels. I am in t-shirts all the time, but let's see if you can see this. Hold on, there, hey, there it is on my t-shirt. Bass Pro T-shirt. All right, America. Okay. Anyway, uh, okay. So back to this. This is that double-sided tape. Now I put bench dogs in here just so yeah, I will remove these after. I'm just using them so I can so I can get this nice and straight when I flip it over. I only need to tape this side because I'm I'm gonna cut this with the CNC. I'm gonna slice it off. Or no, I won't even bother slicing it really. I'll just cut the sign out. I don't have to slice it off. I'll use this as the front edge. I am brand new to this CNC stuff. Still brand new. I've done a couple little things, but not much. So I still consider myself a very, very green, very, very green newbie. So learning, 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 learning. That's all I do. Oh, I think it's part of... Uh, part of staying happy and uh, having a purpose you know learning stuff is fun okay so I'm gonna lay this down just like that there I like that give it a little bit of a bump there there that's pretty good seems straight this front edge isn't exactly straight, but that's okay because it's going to get trimmed anyway. And there, I'll take these out. Don't need these anymore. Put them in my little drawer down here. Put 
take this off to the side. All right. So now let's see. Uh, I'm gonna home this thing. Let me home it. Home in the machine. Here it comes. It's homing, homing, homing. Keep that machine homing. Gonna go there. Now it's gonna zoom back to the tool setter. Which I don't, I don't know if I'll change the location of that or not. I like it back there because it's out of the way. Um, a lot of people have it up in the front in the middle here, but I plan on doing some larger pieces and uh, you can't do that if your tool setter is right where it needs to come to. If your, your project is covering it, that would be a, that could be a problem, I would think. But we'll see. Okay, got this on jogging. Let me get it up here. And I'm here. Oh, and I, I love this uh, dust boot. I think it's the, I forgot which one I have. I always forget. It's the tube kit. I think it's the V2 or something. I don't know. I forget the numbers. But anyway, it's great. The only problem is I have to have this up above when it homes. Otherwise, when it gets over here to that foot, this little part over here will bang into this. And oh boy, and it, it, the thing goes nuts. It, red lights flash and all, all sorts of warnings come up in it. It doesn't like it. So uh, that's the only complaint I about to have about this thing is you have to have it up to do that. But I have to have it up also to zero, which I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna zero the work piece. I might be making this video a little backwards. I might have to go back to, to uh, VCarve Pro and redo the file for this. We'll see what happens. Okay, stay there, don't move. And mine, this works really well. I keep the little uh, magnet. Let's see if we can see. There. This is the, the little magnet that normally you put on the collet. Since this is a spindle and it's grounded to the whole the whole machine, I just stick it to this nut over here on the Y axis and it works great. What I like about it is I leave it there all the time so this way I never forget to put the magnet on there, which I did a few times when I was first doing it and I'd have to put, I was putting the magnet here I'd forget and here comes the thing going down and it's like and it's trying to crush the friggin uh, the, the probe plate here which you know that's that's not good that could be bad crushing your probe plate could be bad really okay Move this over here a little closer only about there that's pretty good I don't know if you can see the let's see if you can see the Z screen let me open this up a little bit there a little bit of a glare there sorry but um yeah you'll see okay so we'll go to the probing screen probing screen there it is okay make sure that's on i like holding this still i know it's probably a bad thing but i, I always feel like it's going to push it off it doesn't it really doesn't but it's just me being anal and being paranoid so i'm going to hit this top corner since i'm measuring off this top corner that tells it where this corner is. It knows the distance between, you know, I measured with the caliper, which way, this way, and this way, the distance. So do that. And I'll hit this top corner and it's gonna come. Here it comes. I'm gonna touch that corner and go, woo, okay. He goes, woo, touched you. Here it comes again. It's coming around. It goes way too far, but that's okay. Too far is better than not far enough. And it's awfully slow, but I guess it has to be slow. And whoop, there we go. Okay, now I'll raise the Z up, move it over the top of the plate. Now I'm gonna to touch the center thing, which will do my Z probe. That did my X and Y, and this is gonna do the Z. And voila. But you know what, I just realized this is dumb. I shouldn't even be doing this right now. Is uh, I gotta change the bit anyway. That was really stupid. Okay, well, that was a waste of time. Okay, well, I showed you how to use the, the Z Pro. There you go, guys. All right, let me get back to uh, I'm gonna go to V Car Pro. I'm not gonna show you that because uh, there's a million videos on V Car Pro, it's not that hard. I'm gonna do a simple uh, V Car of the, just the those, it's gonna be the opposite of that. That's what I'm gonna be doing. So I'll be right back. Hey, here's my uh. Carve Pro carve. I output it to uh, 
little thumb drive and now uh, uh, thumb drive is right there so let's see now i'm going to uh, i realized i was okay zeroing that because that is going to be the first tool i'm going to use the clearance tool not the v bit the v bit comes second so that's good so that is my tool number one right now right there okay Sorry, I'm like not good with uh, putting my phone on a tripod and trying to get it right. Yeah, but, uh, I don't care. Whatever. Okay, so let me go to load file. It's in this bling thing folder. Bling thing. Load the bling thing. Okay. I'm going to rehome. Let me rehome. I, I'm like paranoid. I've got to rehome just in case. Because I don't know what I'm doing. So I want to make sure I'm doing everything right because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying. Paint is eh. I'm going to have to touch this up later with a brush or something. But we'll see. Okay, there it goes. Touching that. Okay. Now, jogging, crawling. Crank up the speed to get it up here fast. You know. Nice and quick, this form and moves. This is the uh, Onefinity Elite Foreman CNC. In case, in case you know you didn't notice, but it's okay. Put this down here. Go to my probing screen again. Top right corner. Keep. It's gonna come over here. Round the outside, round the outside. Come on. There we go. Beep. Yep. Maybe over, move it over there, touch the middle. And it's gonna probe that. Beep. Okay, so now my X, Y, and Z are probed. I should be good to go. So let's see see what happens okay exiting the probing screen going back to program the MDI screen I'm um, uh, let me before I do that I gotta lower this down so the vacuum will actually suck up particles I'll leave this off in the front for now so maybe I can zoom in on this a little bit normally you, you take this part and you put this on the front it makes it much more efficient but if it makes a mess eh, it's okay I don't mind too much. Let's see. Okay, I hit rewind. Cycle start, here we go. Cycle start, okay, let's try this again. Rewind, cycle start, there it goes. Okay. And there she goes. I don't know if you can hear me or not with this microphone over the, uh, the noise that that thing makes. It makes a lot of noise. This is just the clearance path that it's doing for now. Hold on. Okay. 
Okay, that, uh, that's all the clearance that it's gonna do. Yeesh, it's got, uh, the V-bit's got a lot of work to do. And you can see, I have it programmed so when it's done, it comes forward and raises the Z up and it's ready for me to swap out the bit here. So I'll do that. And uh, after I change the bit, it should go all the way back to the tool setter and tap on the tool setter so it knows, it'll know the length of the bit, you know, in relationship to the surface of the material here. Swap this out. Luckily, these are both quarter end, quarter inch shafts, so I don't have to swap out the collet, but I like to take this out. Pop this thing out here. Make sure there's no dust in there. Reach up in here, there's no dust in there. Okay, take that out, okay. And I always like to put these away before I swap, because I'm always going to lose things. That's how I lose things if I don't put them away. Yeah, it'd be good to put this back in there. It doesn't, this doesn't really hold it that well without this there. You know, I don't know. I've never tried it, but I'm guessing that it probably won't hold it. And there we go. Put this in there. Put this container away. Put this good ways in there. Not too crazy, but yeah. You never want to have your bit barely holding in there. You want a, a good chunk of that shaft up in there. You want to get your shaft good and deep. Yeah. But don't. You know? Any Steve Carell fans out there? Okay. And this, uh, I'll show you. This is my drawer. I always, it's a little metal drawer. I could put a link to that too. I got it on Amazon, but I always forget to close it and look what happens. It gets all full of dust. So I have to empty it out and vacuum it. It's like, you know, but, but okay. So now, a screen over there. I know you can even see. And now it's asking me to put in the next bit. It never names the bit right. It says, Put in the 1 16th end mill, but uh, no, no, it's not a 1 16th end mill max, but that's okay. <coughs> okay. Oh, that's in there for now. I just hit the cycle start and it should go, it's gonna take this go all the way back to the tool setter and touch down over there. So, uh, there it goes. There she goes. She's going all the way back to the tool setter. Tool setter is kind of far away, but it goes fast. It zips over there. There it goes. Now it should come back over here. Here it comes.
gotta get used to I gotta get used to using microphones on that instead. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, again, I have no idea what happened because I am a complete newbie to all this, so I really don't know what I did wrong. I, it's killing me. My haze, there's absolutely no info for this. Yeah, look at this. Look, why didn't it? I don't understand. I set the depth the same for everything, and this, look, it's carved to the depth here, but not here? Like, what happened? I don't understand it. Like, why? Why does it do this? <laughs> I don't get it. It's killing me. But uh, what can I do? I got, I... Ay, ay, ay. Drives me freaking crazy. There's more money I gotta spend. Holy crap, man. I'm like, I'm spending three times the amount of money that I'm getting to for the damn sign. It's ridiculous. Oh well. Uh, this sucks. Well, until next time, folks. This is failure number five, I think, for this friggin' thing. Okay, goodbye. Okay. Well, instead of completely giving up on this again, I figured, you know what, let me try. I'm gonna go a little deeper. So I redid all the tool paths and uh, I think it was like 0.02, I made it to 0.04 or something like that. I made it a little bit deeper cut. So we'll see if that helps with this stuff like here and stuff. We'll see what happens. So um, I'm gonna go load the tool and uh, start over again. So I'm gonna do all that again with the zeroing and all that stuff. I won't film all that because it's extremely boring. Yeah, bye. Okay. I did my Z thing and all that, and it's all, uh, I think it's ready to go. Hit rewind. Control start. Oh, I'm gonna start this down too. Oh, good, it's asking me for the tool. Thank goodness, because I forgot to put this down. It's a little vacuum. Let me set this set around there. I don't know. This looks pretty good. Let me look underneath here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, the tool's there, the rule number one. Okay, cycle start. It's gonna go back there. It's gonna tap. Hopefully it works okay. Yeah, put the brushes down. Okay. Boop. Something went wrong there. I'm gonna try re-zeroing because it looked like it was gonna start in the wrong spot. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm being paranoid, but let me see. If I stop that, I'm gonna have to re-zero. Because this has happened to me once before. I load the file. And the, I guess I'm supposed to load the file and then zero. I don't know. What the hell? Okay. Get my stop. Let's pick up my that. Put this on here. Let's get all this debris out of there. Uh, let's move this over there. Over there. Down here. Okay, let's see. Do that again. part of the learning process, I guess. Okay, now let's see. Exit that. Let's go back to the programming. And rewind and hit cycle start after I drop this back down. Okay. Now let's see. Should go to here. And here. Oh, yeah, okay, good. Oh, yeah, it's doing the right thing. I can see it's in the right spot. That's good. I don't know if I'm too loud. I'm, like, putting the putting the microphone right near my mouth. This is a learning, a learning video for me as well with this microphone. I don't know how well it works or how bad it works. We'll see. Okay, I'm going to put it back on, uh, well, 
this one's pretty quick. So I'll let it go. When I when I swap out to the V bit again, I will put it on time lapse. There's a part. There's a part that I'm not happy with. I'm hoping the the, the new tool path with the V bit will fix that. I hope. We'll see. If not, I'll try going a little deeper. I'll just keep going. You know. Sometimes you gotta get your tool in there a little deeper. You know. I don't know. We'll see. This should be done quick because uh, it didn't take long before I put it on time lapse, which was a kind of a waste of time because it went so fast. I was like, oh, okay. Gotta say the vacuum's doing a pretty good job considering the front of the front of the dust boot is off. It still works pretty well. It is a uh, I believe it's this. Yeah. It's it's an old rigid shop vac that I got hooked up. It goes up to there and then they have a oh, 50, 55 gallon drum with a little little tiny uh, Little tiny cyclone separator on top from Harbor Freight, I believe. So far, it's working well. My wood shop in my garage, I have an actual like dust collector. Up oh, here it comes. Yep, that's stopping. And here it's come. And it's going to ask for the next tool. See? It's asking for the next tool, tool number two, which is not. I don't know why it does this. Every no matter what I call the tool in VCarve Pro, it says it's a 1 16th end mill, which it's not. Every single tool it calls it a 1 16th end mill. I don't know what that problem is. If anybody out there knows why it would do that, please let me know. Okay, I'm gonna change out the bit. Okay, I put in the little 60 degree V. You know what, my problem could be this is the wrong kind of bit for this. It's, I think this looks like it has four flutes, which might be too many for working with this stuff. If that's the case, well, I don't have any other bits for this. So let's see, and there it goes. Going, going back to the tool setter. What the, that's a little off. That's not right, look what it's doing. Ugh. What the hell? Okay, I guess we gotta rehome. Okay, let me go back to. Um, that's never happened before. Get my Z. Oh, look at that, it like jammed it into the thing. So now I gotta uh, bring this forward. I gotta read Z and everything. Oh my god, what a pain in the ass. I don't know what I did wrong. I did nothing. I didn't. Uh, my god, what a pain in the ass this thing is. I'm telling you, learning experience is uh, quote unquote fun. 
Okay, we did that already. Okay, I'll do the homing again. I raise this up, because if I don't raise this up, oh boy, I'd show you, but I don't want to break this. I'm, a, I'm amazed that those arms have not broken from, uh, from homing. There, now it's right again. Well, I have to rehome it for each tool? What the hell? That's weird. Okay. So now what? Let's see. Bring it forward again. I guess I gotta re zero. Holy hell, man. Love this thing, but I'm starting to hate it. <laughs> it's like. Brrr. Okay, let's get it over here. Let's slow this down so I'm not zooming all over the place. Let's get this down here. Go night. Probing dig my digger here. Now I don't know how to continue from this tool. Do I have to go God well, since I stopped it, does that mean I have to go back? I, I, gotta, I know there's a way to do it, but I don't know how to do it. Let's see. Okay. I'm hoping it'll just continue. I don't know. Let's see. Okay, we'll exit that. Another program, M dot, M D I. Well, let's see if I just hit cycle. Sorry, not rewind. Uh, let's see. Can I go to tool? I don't know how to go to. Let's see. Go to work origin. Hmm. Well, what's the worst that can happen? It'll just. That's fine. Okay. They might have to do that. It's going to do the clearance thing again, but with this tool. Yeah. yeah it's running the, the clearance path again, but with the V bear. So it's really not going to do anything. It's just a waste of time, I guess. But maybe now, after it's done with this, I could just hit, you know. The cycle start and it'll just keep going. Oh my god, what a waste of time. Okay, goodbye. Please, everybody, comment what am I doing wrong? Goodbye. Okay, it just finished that, uh, well, it's like a fake uh, clearance thing, so now I don't have to change the tool because the tool that I want next is already in there, so I should just be able to hit. The cycle start, freeze start cycle start after changing the tool, which I did already. So let's see. Now let's see if it knows where the tool setter is this time. Before it went back there and it went like an inch beside the tool setter and it pushed a bit into the MDF, which was really weird. Well, oh, it's got the tool setter this time. That's good. Okay. That's a good sign, hopefully. Now it's going to come back over here and start up. Alright, I'm going to put you back on the uh, time lapse. Okay, I did it the second V carve. I uh, I guess it looks a little better. Maybe I gotta do it again deeper. I don't know. But this looks like it might. This might clean up with a, with a toothbrush. Looks, yeah, there's some fuzzies in there, but they're I can see they're moving. They're moving pretty easily. So this could be good. Let me see. Okay. So now uh, let me try cleaning this up a little bit. Uh, Oh, well, I guess I'll do the profile. It's going to do a pocket around the outside and then the profile after that with the same bit. So I don't know if it's going to ask me to change the bit again or not, but we'll see. So let me put you guys here quick. Let's see. Okay, I watched the. I'm pretty sure it's this one. Yep. It's down cut thing again. Three. That's 
calling it a 1 8 end mill. I don't know why. I gotta figure that out, why it calls it by the wrong name. Ugh, okay. Take that out, put it away. Try to remain diligent with this stuff. And this thing, okay, put that container away. Flutes up inside the collet. So that's what I've been learning lately. Okay, now let's see if this works this time. Okay, cycle start. Off it goes. Now let's see if it gets to the, the tool setter the correct way. It looks like it is. Yep, that's good. Okay, here we go. That's the first time it's doing this, so let's see what it does. There it goes. Yep, doing what I thought it would do. Oh, see that? Must be a low spot here. Look at that, yeah. There must be a low, a low spot in the material here. Huh. Might as well do that again. Make it lower. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, I think this is... Yeah, it's very scared it's low here. Huh. Well, let's see. I might fix that as it goes around. Nope. Not fixing it. Oh, a royal pain in the butt. Oh, there we go. Okay. As long as it comes out white, that's all I really care about. The depth, the depth isn't really all that important as long as it, you know, comes out white. You need it to be white. Okay. Oh, it might be doing the, the profile path. I'm not sure. Oh, no, it's not. It's doing another. Okay. I see what's going on. Okay. Wow. The uh, step over looks like way too much. I didn't do that. I did like a 40% step over, I think. Something like that. Let's see. This could be the profile path that's doing now. Because it is the same tool to do the profile path. I don't know if they would stop to ask me to change it or not, but I guess not. Like I said, I'm learning. Still learning. Spending and spending and then learning. And then spending some more and then learn a little bit more. And then spend a whole lot more. And then you learn a little bit more. But then you spend more. And then you spend some more money and you learn a little bit. But then you spend a lot more and, and you learn a little bit. You know. Very costly education here. Well, we'll see. I think it is doing the profile pile. I don't know why it's doing such shallow passes. I, I did not tell it to do that. Oh well, I guess maybe I did. Huh. Okay, yeah, it's, it's cutting the final profile. I should have done this like in one pass. I don't know why it's uh, doing multiple, but that's fine.
Boy, what a mess this thing's making. Look at all that stuff everywhere. Woo! Man, it's a mess. Let's see. I'm going to see if I can flip this on when it comes around. There. That might help a little bit. Don't try this at home, kids. Yeah, this the uh, this PVC as is is sold as being a half inch thick, but it is not. You need to use your caliper. I measured it with the caliper, and it's 0.37. So I'm setting this to do the profile path at a maximum depth of 0.36. So there should be a like a, a what they call like an onion skin on the bottom. We'll see. And I'm pretty sure my, my spoil board is flat because I, I just uh, surfaced it and redid it not that long ago. So it's definitely the material that is not a consistent thickness. Which, what can you do with PVC? I can't, uh, I can't surface the PVC. I don't think I can, but God, what a mess that would be. Just got to do what you got to do with it. I guess uh, PVC is really not good for V-carving. It's more for cutting out shapes, cutting out letters, and, like, gluing them onto other color signs and stuff. But we'll see. I don't know if there's a better material that I could use for outdoor signs. We'll see. Okay, I think it's done. Yeah, it's finished. All right, now I've got a big mess to clean up. Uh, let's see how this looks after I do the toothbrush thing. I'll do a time lapse, I guess, of me uh, brushing this clean thing clean. Well, that's about it, I guess. I, uh, I don't know. I'm not thrilled the way it came out, but it's not bad. It's pretty good. Let's try cutting it. It's much easier to snap this off. I don't want to mess it up to try to snap it.
Okay, let's clean this up and see how best I can make this look. Let's see, I don't know. Get this look in here. I mean, it's not great, but you know, look. At least you can read it. It's a sign. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, like that. There, let's get zoomed out again. There. You can read it. It looks good from far away. Hopefully, that's good. Yeah, okay, we'll see what I can do with this. All right. Well, that's the end of this video. That's about as best I can get this thing. And that's about it. There's still some little fuzzies here and there. Little couple scratches but it's okay it's not bad looks pretty good i might give the uh give the client a pretty big discount on this thing because it's it's not it's not perfect it's not what i wanted it to be but you know oh well, well what can you do better luck next time i'm hoping some of you guys out there can uh give me some tips in the comments about what i should be doing to make this better because uh this client wants to get more signs done, so hopefully, you know, if they're happy with this, they'll get more done, and my next ones will be even better. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, if you can, if you think you might have learned something, or if you're laughing at me, that's fine, too. Just hit a like and maybe even subscribe. You never know, you know. I'll show some screw-ups later on, too. All right. Take care, people.